So the average restoration company within the United States does about $2 million per year. But now, if you ask me, I know plenty of business owners that have scaled their restoration companies to a rate figures. And you might ask, well, what's the difference between the average that only does $2 million per year to those that do over eight figures? And the answer I would say is simple, and it's fishing holes. The people that get to scale over eight figures, they merely found what worked within one fishing hole and then duplicated and found other fishing holes. You see, if you have one source of revenue, that source of revenue is only gonna be so good and only get you to one point. So if you start with online marketing, you're only gonna get to a certain point. If you start with only TPAs, you're only gonna get to a certain point. Now, if you're able to add more fishing holes, you're able to grow and scale your business to success. And it's actually easier because you've already figured out what works within one fishing hole. In this video of Albi After Hours today, I wanna to go over the top five restoration revenue sources. Here we go. So the first revenue source within restoration that I would recommend everybody benefit from and go really crazy with is actually online marketing. Online marketing does wonders and there's multiple forms of what you can do. And it's also like the easiest, lowest barrier to entry form to get within the market. And there's multiple forms uh, that you can go through. So you can go to lead generation companies like 33 Mile Radius and Thumbtack. Those two specifically I've used and I strongly recommend links on them below. And that is a pay per lead model. So basically what these companies do is they launch marketing campaigns nationwide, they collect leads, through their branded website and then they sell you those leads back to you. And you pay typically per lead and you typically pay for a qualified lead or somebody that actually needs your services within your service area. They're gonna max out only at a couple of leads per month or per week, but they're a great thing that you can plop in right away and it's low barrier to entry. Then as you keep going on your online marketing career, you might want to um, mess around with pay per click PPC. And that is basically hiring a restoration marketing company that can run ads for you on Google. So that way when somebody searches water damage restoration in San Francisco, you'll get that sponsored ad and then they'll be able to click on that. The next thing that you should do with an online marketing is make sure that you have a Google My Business listing and make sure that you are having your customers write reviews for you so that way you show up and that that Google My Business profile is complete with images and things like those. In the link below, you'll find the Google My Business profile for Romexterra, for example. I thought we did a pretty good job at that. Now, if you're sitting here and telling me that, hey, I did all those online marketing things, I'm gonna add another layer of online marketing that you can do that mostly no restorers do. And in the link below, you'll actually find a full explanation of it. But it's the concept of running LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube ads targeting insurance agents, plumbers, and property managers. So that way you can then pay for a lead, which is a insurance agent, plumber, or property manager that's interested within your service. And that's actually something very easy to do. You can actually probably do it yourself. The second fishing hole that I strongly recommend and kind of the second step after you've mastered online marketing is going in after insurance agents. And the reason I like insurance agents is typically you don't have to really pay them for their business, right? Because they're regulated by the SEC, so they can't accept referral dollars. And you typically pay them with value. And the goal with that, we actually have a restoration sales bootcamp at Albi. I'll give a shout out to Richelli Mordecai, who is with Sales Booster Solutions. She trains people on how to implement this. But the concept is you're going out to different referral sources, insurance agents, for example, and you're stopping at 15 of them every single day on a four week rotation, every four weeks you see them again, and you're pitching to them the value that your restoration business provides them. And typically with insurance agents, the value is I can handle your claims for you and I can make your customers satisfied when they have a claim. And therefore that will prevent your customers from dropping and going to a different insurance agent, therefore boosting your book of business. And then you could also host CE classes with the Department of Insurance and do all kinds of other things to market to these insurance agents. If you're not marketing to insurance agents, you're missing out. Our first route marketer for insurance agents brought in about $1.4 million her first year. She came from the auto collision industry, already marketing to insurance agents. We brought her into our business and it was just absolutely life-changing. Highly recommend it. Number three is plumbers. Now plumbers are a little bit tricky and the reason plumbers are a little bit tricky is in certain markets, there have been people that ran with the idea. For example, in the Chicago land market, there's a specific company that pays like 20% of the revenue to plumbers and that could be a little tricky. If you really think about it, where do people who have some sort of water leak or a burst pipe typically go to first? 
And the answer is they'll probably call a plumber. So what if we can get a plumber to refer our restoration company after they come and fix the leak? And it's a great value add to the plumber if you wanna go the percentage of revenue route because you basically pitch to the plumber that they can have an additional source of revenue from their existing plumbing leads if they refer your restoration company. The other thing you can do for plumbers is offer them a insurance policy where basically you go out there and you clean up their mess if they accidentally do an oopsie. Number four is property managers. Property managers are people that basically, well, manage properties, whether it's large buildings like the one we're in right now, or whether it's single family homes. And a lot of times they run into insurance claims and whenever insurance claims happen, it's really a inconvenience to them as a property manager. And they care about somebody who can take care of things quickly and minimize the amount of losses that they incur. And in commercial space, the biggest loss to a building is the amount of time that that business is actually interrupted. So if you can pitch yourself as a restaurant leader within your market to help the property manager reduce the amount of time that that place is displaced, therefore reducing the loss, you will win and that's another fishing hole that you should add. The fifth way you can grow your restoration revenue is actually by expanding to different service offerings. And I'll give you a quick story here on how we did it. We were offering emergency services and reconstruction when we first started at Remextera. And we ran into a bunch of insurance agents. We started marketing to insurance agents and a big hailstorm came through the area. And when that hailstorm came through, all of the customers of the insurance agents came to the insurance agents and told them, hey, a bunch of people are knocking on our roofs. We don't know if we have hail damage, so on and so forth. And the insurance agents started coming to us and asking us, hey, do you guys do roofs? The initial answer was, well, no, we don't really do roofs. But then I'm like, wait a minute, roofing and reconstruction, like we do roofs after a fire, we can do roofs anytime. So we said, look, insurance agents will actually go out and take a look at those roofs for you and we spun that into a value-add product for the insurance agents and then that eventually turned into a couple million dollars worth of exterior restoration that we were doing and we still do to today and uh, another common example of that is contents so we were doing fires before but we didn't do contents for a while and we realized hey for every single fire that we get and for every single water damage job that we can get we can also sell contents and the concept of expanding it's let's look at our existing referral base, let's look at our existing sources of revenue and how can we to that existing source of revenue add another service offering and through that we can expand. If you look at the largest restoration companies within your market, they're probably full service and have multiple service offerings and that's why. Now you gotta be very careful though because contents comes with its own headache. We've lost TVs before, but still had the remotes. Roofing comes with its own headaches um, as well. So you just have to make sure that whatever you take on when you expand vertically, that you're actually able to do it. Hopefully this provides you guys value. And I would actually ask you guys a question of which one of these fives have you not done so far and you're gonna implement within your business today. If you like this content, wanna hear more, hit the subscribe button, please. And there's also a notify bell where you'll be notified when a next I'll be after hours video comes out and make sure that you follow us on social media as well. Really appreciate you guys. See you next week.